<laughs> hey. <laughs> oh. You make some adjustments, but Jackie Bradley Jr. pops it up. Long run for Cabrera. And he made the play. Oh, he made the play. High fly ball. Deep left. There it goes. Soaring into history. He's done it. He has done it. 62. Aaron Judge is the American League single season home run leader. The AL King. Case closed. Welcome, everybody, to the newest edition of the Bronx Muchachos podcast. I'm your host, Mark, and tonight we got a couple of boys with us. We got Dave. What's going on, everybody? Happy Friday afternoon. And we got Alex. Hello. How's everybody doing? All right. On this nice Friday afternoon, you guys know the drill at all times. Rate, subscribe, like, review. Hit us up on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon, Odyssey. You know the platforms. You know where we're at. Dave tells us every night where we're going and where we're at. So hit us up there. Um, You guys are watching on YouTube. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Join us in the chat. Let us know what you're thinking. Come with it. Come with questions. Come with everything you want. And, of course, always, 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 SeatGeek is the place to be. Get your, get everything you want from there for tickets-wise. Got You want any tickets for, for any games? Go SeatGeek. Use our promo code BRONXMUCHACHOS, all one word, all capital letters, and you get yourself a discount on your first order. So, fellas... How are we feeling after the past 10 days and the past 10 games? What are you thinking? Dave, have fun. Com- yeah. Complete dumpster fire, man. Complete dumpster fire. This team, for the second season in a row, could not hit water if they fell out of a boat. Like, what is this? You win. You had a chance to sweep the team that's directly in front of you in the AL East. And you take two steps forward, and then you take two steps backwards. Just like that. It's unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. Why was Harrison Bader sitting the night before? Or last night, rather, I think it was. Whatever. These games just seem to just mesh together. Why is John Carlos Stanton sitting? You got a team that's eight games now over 500, and your biggest offensive bats are sitting on the bench. Like it, it's just it just does not make any sense to me. You're trying to win ball games to get into the playoffs, and, and you're sitting your biggest offensive pieces. And not only that, the outfield is a complete mess. You got Oswaldo Cabrera out there not knowing how to catch a damn fly ball. Like, <laughs> are we are we serious right now? Are we serious with this right now? You got an infielder that can't play left field, can't catch a ball, not once but twice. Like, I, I, you know how I feel about Esteban Florial, but I think it's time to, you know, let this ship sail and bring this and bring Florial up. Not, not saying get rid of Cabrera, but, you know, you got Billy McKinney, you got Jake Bowers, you got Willie Calhoun, Greg Allen. Get rid of one of them and put Florial back on this 40 man roster, stick him in left field, and just let him play. Like, I was hoping to come on today and talk about some positive stuff because we got Carlos Rodon making his. 2023 Yankees debut, and we got to talk about this shit. Like, oh, man, the myths. It's aggravating. We <sighs> suck. We suck. Just, so yeah, just last night was a complete officer fire. Luis Severino, Luis Severino needs to figure it out or go to the bullpen. One of the two. You can't let this guy keep going out there and losing games. He's washed. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm done. He's tipping. He, the guy has to be tipping, tipping his pitches or something. Like, I'm sorry, but. And I think it's beyond tipping pitches at this point. I, 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 I'm not going to disagree with you on that at all. Like, but I'm, I'm just, I'm. Yes, it's going to suck to say this, but you know what? Bye, bye. Like, you might become a Hicks and do great over somewhere else. Good, but you know what? I'm sorry. The pinstripes are too heavy. Pinstripes are too heavy on him. 
Pinch rates are too heavy on Josh Allison. The pinch rates are basically too heavy on basically this whole damn team, I feel. Because, like, let's be real. Okay, I'm not asking for home runs. I'm asking for, like, let's get contact hits. You know, basic fundamentals of baseball. I'm not saying, oh, go hit a home run. I'm saying hit the ball past the infield. That's all. That's all I'm saying. But that's not happening. Why? Because guess what? This staff, this they're all too much about analytics, 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 analytics. Like, I'm going to keep beating that horse, guys. That's all they care about is that. And it's like the nerds upstairs like, well, we're going to make it to the playoffs. Woo. And get out in the first or second round. I don't give up. You know, you, come on. <laughs> like you don't you don't give a toot that's what you don't give i don't give a rats <laughs> like let's be real mark come on man like this is ridiculous okay your son's little league team plays better baseball than them <laughs> they li- well they listen better too <laughs> <laughs> okay and uh, and that says a lot for considering they're all of them are what four year old, five year old. <laughs> yeah, and they're and, and, and it's a T ball. It's a T ball. <laughs> Let's be real. Coach Pitt. We, we step. Oh, we step. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We we, we moved up to Coach Pitching. That's right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We moved up a year. <laughs> but come on, bro. This is BS with this damn team. I'm fucking tired of it. I'm sorry. Oops. Oh, dropping it. <laughs> dropping it already. And there it I is. Did. Yeah, there there it is. We we're waiting for that one. I, I really, I really am. Come on, we all are. Just do it. Guys. I get, I get what you, I get what you're saying, and I, I hear what, I hear. My, my biggest complaint is this: you have non outfielders playing the outfield. When you have outfielders that you could have brought up that could actually, that actually know how to play the position, you have people consistently out of position at all times. Mm-hmm. You have three gold glovers you have basically four gold gold glovers on you oh, i'm sorry five i'm keep adding on more and more right five gold glovers three of them are third basemen three gold glovers are third basemen ikf josh donaldson <laughs> and dj lemayu yep all right so <laughs> you you made these deals to to stack up certain spots but you have but everybody else is not where it should be and I even left out Trevino. So obviously, six, it was six gold gloves. My bad. My bad. Ooh. And I'm, well, you know, you just gotta gotta give credit where credits do that. But yeah, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is this: you don't have a left fielder. You got plenty. You got plenty of guys that can do that in the minor leagues. You're putting IKF out in left field, and that's become a adventure in and of itself. Cabrera can't play the outfield anymore for some reason. None of those guys are hitting are hitting well. I mean, IKF all of a sudden found it. You put, you put IKF at third base, he can hit. So that's what, so that goes to the Oswald Peraza portion of this whole thing. Where if you want to bring up Peraza because he's smoking the ball down down in AAA, he's not going to play because they won't put him there. Because now you got because all of a sudden IKF now deserves more playing time. Makes no sense to me. You had you. They've wasted so many opportunities to to have the right guys in the right position, and it gets frustrating. Forget about the pitching. You know, whatever the pitching is, pitching it can ha- any can happen to anybody at any given time. But at some point, something something's got to give. And I'm at this point. I'm I if if they're if they're going to play the game that they normally do, that they get them into the playoffs. And that's what probably what they're gonna do. Then I want yes. them to. Sw- I want them to swing big. I don't want to go the other way. If they're gonna if they're gonna play the game that we're gonna make go into the playoffs, swing big. I want big. I want big names. Forget it. Why? I don't care because th- because if we're gonna if you're gonna play this stupid game and you're going to go for the playoffs, then you're gonna then I want the big names because then you, there's no we don't have a left fielder. What to put we freaking hope in our to put hope into our fan base that for his for for a dream that's not gonna happen let's be real mark let's be real the team's gonna make it to the playoffs they always gonna make it to the damn playoffs they're gonna get booted out if not first second round they're gonna get booted yeah. out the last round they're not gonna make it to the world series but, but, but what i'm saying swing, fan base swing, even hope but swing big swing because swing big i'm saying swing big Forget unless this, unless we were going, about going mark, mark. It's forget about the margin. Forget about the margin. I'm saying forget about the margin. I'm saying go big whale hunting. All right, go big whale hunting. Get the get the guys that's going to get you there. If you need, if and if you got to give up guys that we got right now, if we got to give up some youngsters, then give up some of the youngsters. All right. So we were talking before. We were talking before, right before we got on. I said I got a, I got a uh, trade for you then, Alex. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, we've spoke about this once before. Would you would you do would you make a trade for Juan Soto right now? No. And the first and the first name has to in the first name that's coming out of pa the Padres' mouth is Volpe. Would you make that trade? Just Volpe? No, no, it's going to be plus plus because oh. Volpe Volpe doesn't doesn't make doesn't move the needle. Oh, no, Unfortunately, like, oh, and, as, and as, Yankee, as as Yankee fans, we, we you know everyone's on the Volpe train right now because he's doing well. But Volpe doesn't move the needle enough to be to to move for Juan Soto. So it's going to be a plus plus. But the, but the but the but the no. deal starts with but the no. deal starts with him. I'm sorry. I'm no. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. No, no. As much as like I want to say yes, we got too many damn outfielders as it is that don't know how to play the damn position anyway. Why get another one? Ooh, yay! More outfielders. Like, let's be real. What? Okay, because we don't know when Aaron Judge back. back. Let's be real. He's probably not gonna be back this season. Like. And if he does come back this season, he's not going to be at 100%. I mean, like, I would be happy if it's like an 80%. But the way it's going to, they're going to push his ass out there, it's going to be more like a 60% that he's going to be out there every other day because he's going to be on the DH because he's going to be because being out there in the outfield is going to hurt him. Like, no, I'm done. I am legitimately done. Like, here we go. Here's a number. Here's here's a number you want. I'm going to put out there for you guys since you know Danny's not here, and I'm going to bring a number for you guys. If we're going against the Oakland Athletics, run differential plus 38. Against the rest of the MLB, we are negative 15. Why? Why go fishing? We don't even have the runs. Unless we're going to the unless we're going against the uh, Oakland Athletics, round one, round two, round three, and World Series, it ain't gonna damn happen. Like who cares? Well, that's why you go that's what I'm saying. You go big fish hunting, you go big game hunting, so you can you can supplement all that stuff. Not worth Dave, what do you think? What do you think about that? Oh, Dave, you're muted. If you yeah, I, I mean, this is <clears throat> the, 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 this is tough, man. Because I'm I'm not against making a big trade, but where this team is right now and the way they've been playing offensively is really bringing in a guy that you're gonna have to that you're gonna have for half a season and yeah. have to extend. That's I don't know how many rental? years of arbitration Soto has left. I don't know Soto is a free agent after Soto next year. He's a free agent after next year. Okay, so then you, you, you get him for, you get him for two at, playoff oh, runs. You get him for oh, two right. playoff runs. Okay, well then you're still going to have to extend him, which means you're going to have to hand out another nine-figure contract because then you're going to just. I mean, this team acts like they're broke. You really think they're going to give Juan Soto another another? You think they're going to dish out another three hundred plus million dollar contract for Juan Soto after the next two years? Dang. I don't see that Dang. happening. And hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, if you if you if you were to go make a big trade, I think this guy is, is the center of something. Um, of course, my computer is letting me down, but he's got 21 home runs and an OPS of like 900. So I definitely Six. think Florial is part of a deal going somewhere. But it's just like we were saying last week, is this team really worthy of a midseason acquisition from somebody to make a playoff push? And who I, – I just don't know if it's worth it at this point with the way they've been playing. It doesn't matter who they play. They get blown out by the Boston Red Sox. They get demolished last night by the Baltimore Orioles. Like, where does it end? You hey. know what I mean? You got a bunch of quad A players on this team. I just don't know if it's worth so. That's why I'm saying get rid of the quad A players. Bring it, bring it, bring go back, go back and bring us, bring get another superstar, get someone who can carry the team. Because the guys that yeah, we have right now can't carry, can't carry it. If whatever the place yeah, we is, already went, we've gone down this road before, just stacking superstars from 2010 through 2015. It didn't really work. It hasn't worked. Sure. Yeah, but but at some point we do you do need to kind of go back to a certain model because what we have right now doesn't work. How many how many different guys, how many different infielders do, are we going to keep throwing out in the outfield? How many different infielders are we going to go play the positions in the infield that aren't that aren't playing that well? How many catchers are we going to yeah. keep? Are we going to keep? How are we going to have in the, that can't hit the baseball? Or if they can hit, or if they can hit, then they can't figure out where to, what bases to run to, or if they're if they're <clears> safe <throat> or not. Well, I mean, at least we got. At least we got a catcher that knows how to bunt. I mean, at least we got that going for us. Woo! I'm being sarcastic. And I'm being a, I'm giving you a sarcastic woo. I just 
I mean, we've been throwing stuff at the wall for 14 years Dave. to see if it sticks and none of it's sticking. So I, I don't know where you go from at this point. Dave, 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 let's just put it this way, guys. Okay, let's just put it this way. We all remember the, the show Tiger King. Let's be real. How Steinbrenner is basically, he cannot, any deal we want, he cannot financially recover from it. That's what it's come down to. No matter what deal we want to happen, it's not, he's not going to financially recover. So, Mark, guess what? You want to know how he's going to financially recover? Let's get rid of everybody. Bye. Unless you're on a rookie, like I said before, unless you're on a rookie contract, okay, or you're a big, like, or unless you're on a long-term contract, deuces, bye. Hey, Josh Allison, guess what? Start your retirement now. I don't care. The season's a wash, okay? Uh, Glaber, trade them away. Boom. Just get rid of things so that way they have money to spend in the offseason to actually make the big moves, and we could have something next year. Because this year, I don't care. I don't care. It's a wash. The season's a wash. I don't – even if we make it to the playoffs, which they're probably going to. We, we all know this. It's playoff or bust. That's how they always look at it. They're going to make it there. I don't even give a – a flying hoot who they play against in the damn playoffs. Bye. It's not worth my time. I'm not going to care about it. I'm not going to give myself a false hope. Like we're going to do great. No, no, nah, man. I'm, I see this grass half empty. So, so let, so let's go down this road with you, bud. Mm -hmm. You're saying, get, you're saying get rid of Torres. Cause yep. he's our, cause he's arbitration eligible. You say get yep. rid of IKF, get rid of Donaldson, obviously. Mm -hmm. What what about Lemay? He's got three years left, but he's got no trade. He's he's ten fit. He's a ten five. Like stu we're stuck with Lemay. That one we're stuck with. So you're good with we're, getting rid of Bader too. He's ten, he only 10 has five. A limited no trade clause. Yeah, it's very limited. That's why. So, unless but you can trade to what he's trade to what we want him. He wants to go to then. All right, but then you're saying get rid of. You're saying get rid of Higgy. Get rid of Torino. Get rid yep. of Bader also. Yep. yep. Get rid of him. Just bye. Bye. Come on, you, we Dominguez is coming next year. We all know it's Dominguez is either going to come beginning of next year or, or halfway through next year. Anyway, so bye. Why even bother? Why am I going to wait? Why am I going to put a stopgap in the outfield? Stop more stopgaps in the infield when we have young talent that wants to come up, be like, hey guys, guess what? The doors are open. We're going to give it to you, give you the chance now. We're not going to make we, we, we make it to the playoffs, we make it to the playoffs, give you experience in the playoffs, and next year we start anew and we see what the hell happens <clears> then. <throat> I don't care this year. Let's be real. Okay. We got tonight going into we're going against the Cubs tonight. The Yankees are 12 and 0 against the Cubs in yet in the Bronx since the 1932 World Series. The Cubs have never beat the Yankees in the Bronx ever. And guess what's going to happen? I'm saying it now. The Yankees are going to lose to the Cubs one game this weekend. And I lost connection on my camera. <laughs> so that's what happens when you talk shit. <laughs> I don't care right now. I'm so pissed at this freaking team. Um, I'm going to push back and disagree with some parts of this just a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I, 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 I'm keeping Glaber. I'm keeping Harrison Bader. Uh, I, I'm even going to go out on a limb and defend IKF a little bit here. I mean, ever since they moved him out of the starting shortstop role and they've been moving him around to second, short, third, left, center, right, and apparently now pitching, um, he hasn't been doing bad. I mean, he's batting 258, which is better than some people on this team. And, um, so you're gonna you know, it seems like there. he's really just found himself. And uh, God, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> so we're keeping um, a stopgap. You're keeping a stopgap, Dave. That's not your – No, but he, he, hear me out. I would extend him for one year past this year, keep him in that utility role as a oh. bench piece, and mm – -hmm. I would jettison, obviously jettison Josh Donaldson. You replace him with Oswald Peraza. And mm. I would, you get rid of all these stopgap outfielders and guarantee you're probably going to see some like J Dom or Floreal next mm -hmm. year. If, they, if Floreal doesn't get picked up in the Rule 5 draft this year, which possibly might happen. Floreal is not Rule 5 eligible. Floreal is, well, Floreal can be a, a minor league free agent, but. Everson yeah. Pereira could. Everson Pereira got bumped to AAA, and he could be. He could. He could be. He's not. Oh yeah, he got bumped to AAA the other day. I thought I was just under the assumption that if you're not on the 40 man roster in the minor leagues, that you're you can be taken in the Rule Five draft. So that's what I was. <laughs> no, you to. you get full Rule Five eligible with, with certain with certain caveats. I would. Yeah, I would actually keep IKF past this year a little bit. No, I'm I'm done with IKF. 
honestly. Well, we know, we, we've we seen, know we've you seen, hate him. It, it's not a big hate. I, you know, Danny and I used to talk about it last year, and Danny, Danny and I had all these conversations off the side about I can't if it's shortstop, and that's all. That was a whole nother thing in and of itself. But, I'm with Mario. I'm with Mario on that one, though. What he just said. <laughs> But either which, but either which way, I can't. Mean, I can't. Can 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 yeah, g- give me a minute before you put it back up there. IKF represents all, right. th- all the same crap that we had, which is it, not just a stopgap, but just a utility guy. How many utility guys do you need on this on this roster? That util- you got two utility. You got a utility infielder in, in Lemayhu. You have utility guy in Cabrera, and he can't hit his he can't hit his own weight right now. So what are you so what are you gonna do? Would you rather keep IKF as a utility who's making six this year? Possibly gonna be looking for more next more in a one year, two year deal. I don't want to keep him at that at that money. Let him go somewhere else. He'll probably point. make eight million next year. Yeah, He's I don't need an eight million dollar utility. Make- I don't want it. I don't want him as a utility for eight million dollars. I got it. I got a look how much you're paying DJ. Well, he became a he became that, and probably what the Yankees will do is the stupid thing as well, is that they'll put DJ as the starting third baseman. If they keep, especially if they keep Torres, so I mean, it's just it's just how they're putting things together. Gotta get rid of Torres. I'm sorry. So, I, something I, tells me DJ LeMahieu does not finish this contract in New York. I have. And well, I mean, getting back to and with Torres, he's a guy that helps you win now. His, I mean, he's hitting the ball consistently. Yeah, does he make some dumb care. maneuvers? Yeah, I'm not excusing that, but he's I would idiot. keep. I would keep Glaber. <sighs> Well, Glaber's got one after this year. He's got one more year. Then he's a free agent. So what do you? So he, right now is the time to he's trade a, him. Yes. Why do you want to keep Glaber so much? What What is your fascination with Glaber Torres so much? The guy's because trash. when he's on, he's on. And when he's That's off, why. he's the worst guy out there that no one wants to see. Like, come on. He. So I have the rest I, of this I, team, bro. And I'm not denying Look that. Look at Giancarlo. No. He can't hit a beach ball. And we can't get rid of him because of his damn no trade clause. So what's the deal? Let's get rid of the one we can get rid of then. Let's start getting rid of shit so that way this damn team starts getting, oh, shit, we're going to not stay in New York anymore. We're not going to be getting, getting, getting good treatment anymore. We're going to be in freaking damn Kansas City or some shit like that. I don't give a fuck no more. I did it again. I'm done. Anyway, are you sure you're done? I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna happen again throughout this show. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's already 22 minutes in. I've already done two. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have to put you on, on on. We're gonna put you in the penalty box. Ah well, yep. whatever. Maybe, maybe I'll go on Threads and start seeing what's on there instead of Twitter. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So anyway, so let's, let's so let's swing it back to some positivity then, huh? Let's talk yeah. about let's, let's talk about some happy stuff. Let's talk What's about some happy stuff. Ha- okay, yeah. Okay, just, just halfway just, through the season, guys. That's the happy stuff right there. Calm down, Alex. Calm down. You know, before we get more more f bombs flying out there. So what's so, Alex? You were saying we're talking about the, the Cubs coming in town. Mm-hmm. So you were saying that the Yankees are going to lose one game out of oh, out I, of the oh, three. I think, so. I think so. Okay, but tonight tonight's a bigger night. One, you got the return of Jamison Tyone playing pitching against the Yankees. But more importantly, is and as Dave pointed out before, is the is the first start for Carlos Rodon. Mm-hmm. So, what are your expectations for Rodon today? I, my expectations for Rodon are more are going to be better than the expectations for the bobbleheads that are going to happen tonight for for being Alfonso Soriano bobblehead night. That's my expectations. Because they're going to be a lot of trash cans filled with his head bobbleheads, while Rodon's going to actually go out there and pitch something that uh, that Soriano didn't do last. I mean, um, Sevi didn't do yesterday. Not Soriano, Sevi. <laughs> All right, Dave, take it away. Yeah, come saying, on, you guys know it. You know I'm right. I was saying it's Sevi. It's Sevi. Wait a minute, they have Alfonso Soriano bobbleheads tonight. No, no, it's it's Sevi. It's Sevi bobblehead night. Sevi, it's Sevi bobblehead night, and that's going to be in the trash can. You're only like 14 years too late, but that's cool. Um, <laughs> what would he, when did he come back? Was it 2012 or 2011? Who gives an F back? right now? Just right. go on. <laughs> no, 2013. It was 10 years ago. That's what it was. 2013. Um, you know when you're, I, you know when you're pissed. You can say you say stupid shit too. 
Um, for Rodon, I'm, if he can give me six innings of no run and eight strikeouts, I call it a win. I really call that a win. Do I think yeah, it's going to happen? Not the team. Is it going to happen? I, who knows? I mean, it, and they, oh, they no. talk about his rate. No, They're no, talking no, about no. his rate. Who is going to turn and pull, and pull, him, pull him real fast like he like, does it with everybody else? I mean, I don't put he's much on, stock I think, in I think, he's on, I think they say he's on like a 70, 75 pitch, pitch count anyway, so. I don't, I don't put much stock into minor league rehab starts, especially when you're going up against double A and high A batters. I mean, it's kind of an unfair advantage. Um, for, for the young kids, uh, yeah, go out here and uh, play against this guy that's been at the MLB level for about 10 years and have fun with that. Good luck to you. Um, you know, but, you know, hopefully it's a great start. They, they definitely need an anchor in this rotation along to compliment Garrett Cole since Severino's not getting it done. I mean, nope. Domingo and, and Schmidt have kind of held their own a little bit. I mean, they've been – all over the place. I mean, what, Domingo goes out and throws a perfect game, and then comes back the next game, the next start after that, and gets shelled. So you know, it, those who have been holding their own, but you know, they I definitely three, need three runs. Three runs isn't being shelled. I mean, th- Domingo was pitching to what he's been pitching to. He's been yeah. a three, you know, doing a three plus something ERA. So I mean, after you talk that one, I, that one I'll take a little exception to because he wasn't shelled. But then again, it was the offense not picking up yet again. So it goes back to the sure. problem. The biggest problem is that the offense is trash and they keep throwing out the same people and then they keep putting the guys in the wrong positions like last night you put volpe in the number one spot again where he proved that he that this year can prove he can't he can't do be in the number one spot one over four with a strikeout stop putting him at the number one spot let him sit in the lower end of the lineup where he was figuring things out he doesn't need to be up there let him do let it give it if you're going to keep him there and do all that stuff do it next year Give him that. Let him be the leadoff guy next year. But he's too aggressive at the, at the plate, so he's so being number one is not good for him. This these are the kind of simple moves that they they can make to make their offense click better, and they always fall backwards and do something stupid. Whether it's Cashman and and, and or the nerds telling Boone what to do, or Boone coming up with these bright ideas. Either way, it's getting it's. It's the same comical stupidity that's happening every time, and it's like it's like a retread all the time. Okay, well, they, oh, someone's doing good. We're gonna we're gonna put him here where he can't, doesn't do good. Yeah. Who knows? All, all I need mean is that this team needs needs a break, and um, well, someone in the bullpen already gave themselves a break this year. Um, unfortunately, someone we've. Uh, Diamond in the rough that Brian Cashman found this offseason, Jimmy Cordero, um, has been suspended for the re- remainder of the 2023 season, and his future is unknown at this point. He violated the Major League Baseball uh, domestic violence policy. Uh, don't know exactly what went down, what happened, but apparently it was severe enough to get suspended the rest of the year. First time offense is an 80 game suspension. Uh, we saw it with Domingo Herman a couple of years ago and or all this Chapman before that. Um, I pose this question to all of you, like, where do they go from here? Do they bring him back next season? I mean, this team has had a track record of reinstating two guys that everyone believes should have been removed from the team permanently, given the fact that Chapman shot a gun off and Domingo and his wife had a public altercation. Um, someone saw it and reported it. So I, I kind of feel like they've set bad precedent with this going forward to deal with this. Mm-hmm. And if they release Cordero and send him packing on his way, I get it. He's a 31 year old journeyman, but you can't bring two guys back and say it's okay for the two of them. And then tell this guy to kick rocks. I mean, what, what do you guys think? Alex, you go first. I mean, yes, I see your point of view, Dave. I really do. And I see the what's going to probably be the writing on the wall with this team. Yes, they more than likely will keep him, if depending on the severity of what the news is that comes out. Now, am I on the side of keeping him? No, I wasn't on the side for Chapman. I wasn't on the side for Domingo. And I'm not on the side of this one. 
I'm sorry. Do stupid things, get stupid results. That's my that's my, how I look at it right now. You mess up, you take the consequences, and it get and have fun. I mean, like we've seen it in all sports before. You you have athletes that do stupid things, going to clubs with guns. What happens? Gun goes off, shoots their foot. Not saying names. If you're a Giants fan, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> and then what happens? Career is over. Uh, basketball guy. We got a guy playing with guns. And what's going on with him? His season is looking like it's in, 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 in um it's in turmoil right now, going on for the beginning of the season. So yeah, I say do stupid things, get stupid results. And the stupid result is you got no job. Bye. Have a nice life. I get what you. I I'm. I get what everyone's saying, but I think each one was a different. Is a different case. When when the Yankees when the Yankees got Chapman, they got him on a discounted deal from the Cincinnati Reds, knowing that there was a suspension coming around, and then flipped him and be, and made and turned Chapman into Glaber Torres. Domingo Herman was the best pitcher on that staff when this happened to him in 2019 so for him they were expecting him to come back and maybe not be the best pitcher but maybe be you know top, better than than the than mid than mid rotation after his suspension so to keep him was a base was a baseball decision as well jimmy cordero is a you know What's what's the what's the right what's the right phrase? He, he's he's a you, you it's a dime a dozen. You can get a Jimmy Cordero anywhere. You can bring anybody up from the minor leagues and get yourself a Jimmy Cordero. I don't think Jimmy Cordero is going to be. Uh, I don't think he'll be on this team because he's he is very because one relief pitchers are very volatile, and two he's very replaceable. I mean, think of it this way: when Liza comes back and a bunch of other guys come back. Cordero's spot was going to be in jeopardy, so he kind of did him did him a favor, and he's now, you know, off season he's looking for another place. We don't know what the, what the severity of, of of what he did was. I mean, the, the if but it was bad, it, but it was bad enough that it, that they enacted the domestic violence clause and in, in and suspended him, and whatever he did, he must have he must have deserved it. But we don't nobody. I don't think it's come out and, said, and told what exactly he did do. So, until that point, I mean, I don't want to say you know he's guilty until proven innocent or innocent until proven guilty. It's just he's taking us. He turned around and said, accept, accepts the suspension, and that's that. He's it's it's <laughs> this one's a done deal. I don't think he's a relief really pitcher. He accepted it. He's moving on, and he'll maybe he'll find another team. Maybe he'll maybe he'll move to the independent leagues. Maybe he'll go to the Dominican leagues or 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 the Mexican leagues or something like that. But that's. Where, where I see that happening. Well, by your by everyone's silence, so I think you're all in agreement on that too. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I wasn't expecting him to come back next year. I mean, even if he does, wouldn't I forget how many games are left in the season? But he would probably be okay to go for the beginning of next year. But like you said, dime a dozen. They got a few guys that they're gonna have to protect in the rule from the rule five draft this year. Anyway, so there are a few people that gotta get added to the 40 man roster after the season's over. So is what it is. Um he did something wrong and now is paying the price for it. So hey. Is what it is. I mean, look at the guys, some of the guys in the NFL and the half the stuff they do. I mean God, <laughs> you know, Pac-Man Jones was the biggest, the biggest clown in the NFL when it came to this type of stuff, going to the clubs with guns and everything else. So, um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. It's unfortunate. The kid was pitching pretty good, too. So <clears throat> him and Ian Hamilton were really holding it down this year while everybody was getting hurt and blowing out elbows and shoulders and whatnot. So there we go. Mark, what you got? Well, 
you know, this we're coming into the into the weekend before the All Star game. And during this weekend, also, we will be having the MLB draft, which is always a fun time. I'm, you know, on for for our guys here for, for the pod here. I kind of, I'm more more inclined to watch and, and be up on the on the minor leaguers and stuff like that. I just find I find that part of it. I find that part of the game interesting. Just to see who the next wave of, of Yankees are coming in, or the next wave of trade bait to get to get the to get a superstar for the team, but. Either which way, uh, the Yankees are picking. Have only a couple picks this year. They they lost their second round and fifth round pick by signing Rodon to the to the size of the contract that he signed. So, the Yankees are picking first, third, and fourth this year. So, uh, there's they've been connected to three names dur- during this time frame. And the first one, which is probably the one, if if I'm betting man, this is the be- this is the guy that I believe that they probably will select, and I. Just because you have to understand how the Yankees operate, how they draft. They draft up the middle. They draft catchers, shortstops, center fielders. So this guy, is, this kid's name is Sammy Stefora. He's from, uh, they say, uh, say Panis, Pan- Pan- New York. So he's a local kid. He's committed to Clemson, 18 years old. He's a right hand, shortstop, right-handed, right-handed. Uh, his grade, according to Pipeline, his grades are 40. He's got a 45 hit tool. 50 power, 65 run, a 55 arm, 55 fielding for an overall of 50. So he's kind of fits the mold of a certain shortstop, a couple of a certain shortstop we have now. Local kid, possibly Yankee fan, right-handed, got speed behind him. You know, what it's kind of what, what what's that shortstop right now for the Yankees? So I think that. You know, he's got – he's obviously everybody there has got some tools they got to work on. Um, he's – you know, kids gain some strength over the summertime. He can drive the ball all fields. Um, they're saying his swing's a little stiff, but, you know, needs to – obviously working on that is, is a big thing. Uh, but the big thing for him is that he is an, – he's an, an excellent athlete and a plus runner who can play center some center field. So that's a nice little plus going back to having nice utility people all over the place. That's what the Yankees MO, taking an infielder, moving into the outfield. Um, they, there's a big belief that he can stick at shortstop long-term. So we can see see what happens there. I think it's going to be a big bigger move to get him to come off his Clemson commit, but anything's possible. So that's one. Uh, next kid that I'm actually more intrigued with is Dylan Head. He kind of come, he's another Clemson cl- commit. He is um, he's from Illinois, and in Illinois is becoming a hotbed for prospects coming out and kind of moving up the food chain. He he great. He's a lefty lefty center outfielder. Um, he is hit so his grades are he's got a hit a fifty according pipeline. He's got a fifty five hit, a forty power, an eighty speed, fifty five arm, and a sixty fielding. So he's the kind of guy that can stick play center field, stick in center field, and kind of roam defense defensive first kind of guy. Um, you know, like I said, he's got you know top of the scale speed, knows how to use it, knows how to do it. So I mean, we're talking about guys covering center field, probably stealing a good amount of bags as well. Uh, he's got gap to gap approach, but he's got the ability, but he can get pull happy, which as a youngster that kind of happens. That's where you got to generate when you're younger, you get pull happy to generate your power. Um, he's not that physical, but he can drive the ball to, to right field. They scouts are thinking that he'll max out about 12 to 15 home runs a year, which, you know, kind of go, but, but then again, that, that's as of right now. I mean, if he gets into the weight room, puts on some weight, we'll see what happens. So that's number two. And then the last person I've heard connected to the Yankees is Nolan Chanel. And he is a college bat, left-handed bat, righty throw. He is an out, a first baseman and an outfielder. Um, he is for, he's from FAU. Hit, he's got a hit tool of 60, 50 for the power tool, 45 for the run, 50 arm, 50 fielding, overall 50. So this one is kind of is a intriguing bat bat for, for us to think about just because past three, three draft picks for the Yankees have been lefty bats. I thought they seem to have been investing a little bit more into into left-handed hitting, which is something that when you have a short porch in right field is always something you should be investing in. Um, 
He's got a chance of being an above average hitter. He's got an advanced approach to the plate. And he played in Cape in the Cape. He's played in the Cape, even though his numbers weren't good, but he's got plate discipline, which going back to something Dave, Dave, we've talked about before. It's as long as you got the plate discipline, it's better than what I think Dylan Lawson's teaching a lot of these kids, which is so you know, hit hit strikes hard. Go back to the old ways when when the Yankees were, were the Yankees, which is plate discipline, work the counts, get things moving at that point. Um, he's an average runner, and you know, he's he's something he's something that he being being playing multiple positions, which should give him a give him a leg up, and pipeline ranks all these guys in the mid 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 twenties, I think. Um, you've seen mid twenties to thir- I think the, in the thirties in their top two hundred fifty uh, prospects. So that's kind of yeah. You put you know, they got Sammy on thirty two, the highest. Yeah, Sammy's Sammy's thirty two, and then I think um, Dylan Dylan Dylan, Dylan Head was th- twenty seven or twenty six, and and then yeah, and then then uh, Nathan Nolan was uh, twenty six then. Mm-hmm. So I, those I mean, are I'm those down, are the three names. I, I liked I liked the names that you picked. I think instead of Sammy, I would probably say they go for Kevin Mag- Magali because um shortstop, second base, and he's not just righty righty. It's he has also he has the lefty in there as well, so he could have the ability to do some lefty batting for us. So I mean, he throws right, but he bats left. So I mean, that helps us out for being a Yankee Stadium. That's only thing I see it, but yeah, you're, you're not wrong. We'll here. see. I don't know. You're muted. Mark, stop muting me, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Put me in a corner. How dare you? Um, he's muting you, we'll but see. he's not muting me when I'm cursing? Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really, for real. I mean, I don't know. This organization is overcrowded with middle infielders. You got Roderick Arias, Trey Sweeney yeah, in front true. of right. these guys. So, I, 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 who who knows what's going to happen? You know, draft picks are draft picks. This is exactly what they are un, until they're not. So, we'll we'll see. Yeah, I mean, look at Jorge Mateo. Everyone thought that he was the next coming of Derek Jeter. Look what happened. Starting shortstop for Baltimore. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't get overhyped for the MLB draft just because it's not really a well-known draft like the NFL and the NBA draft. It, College exactly. Ball yeah. really isn't put in the forefront, which is unfortunate. Um, I think if it was, it should be put more pushed more and mm-hmm. get these kids more into the national spotlight because that I'd be all for it. I, I can I concur I concur with you. It's just the problem is that it's like <laughs> with the MLB draft, it's that they go in and then they go into the minors and all that. Like, they're all going through the whole come up in the minor leagues and everything like that. So it's not like they're going to make go right to being oh I'm going to start. Where as an NFL or NBA draft, where it's like we see this big name and then all of a sudden it's like yeah they're going to be playing. They're going to be starting next season. Compared to we don't know when these guys are going to come up. So it's kind of like when. Well, it's also because you have MLB can screw around with your service time as well. I mean, those got you got NBA and M- and NFL players, they're coming right in, and if they don't produce right away, I mean, they they get cut fast. So, um, it's a different, it's a different, it's yeah. a different. The leagues are leagues are different. You know? They are, they are. But I'm like, I don't know. I rather, I think I'd rather get cut fast for not producing than staying on a payroll that I'm getting paid peanuts. For so long before I make it in, and like, oh, okay, now I'm gonna make some money. Like, I don't know. Well, it happens, but you know, some kids. This is the life. Some for some of them, this is the life they lead. So. It is. It's it's all the prerogative. Yep. Take us home, Davey boy. Anybody got any alibis before we wrap this up? Anybody got any alibis? Get it out now. Alibis? No, you, you know, you're my alibi. I'm, 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 on, I'm here with you. You're my alibi. 
I've been with Dave this whole weekend, guys. So whatever happens saying. this weekend now, Dave knows it. Done. Exactly. Uh, Dave's my alibi. I'm good, I'm good to go. <laughs> nah, man. That's, my, that's the alibi I'm using right now. Yeah, okay. Well, once they got <laughs> knocking on your door this after on Monday morning, understand. Me and Mark were with you no. the whole time. That's, exactly. We that's, have a that's, camera with that's you. Not, that is not what I meant, but. We have this on camera. It's now live, and uh, it's now you know it's 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 law abiding there. <laughs> everybody's everybody's comedian. Everybody got jokes. <clears throat> All right. Well, thanks for everybody tuning in, listening, watching every week. Uh, sorry for a little bit of a mix up in the scheduling with the holiday and everyone being everywhere. That's why we switched from yesterday to today. So hopefully that wasn't too big of a drastic change for everybody. But you know, you can. We're definitely going back to our regular Thursday episodes, which are every Thursday, nine o'clock on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. So that's where you can catch us every Thursday night. And then uh, next week we got Lindsey Crosby from Lockdown MLB Prospects coming on board for a third time. So we're definitely looking to get together with him. Uh, thank you for everybody watching across the pond. We appreciate you. Everybody listening abroad. And then, you know, if you haven't checked out our merch store, you're missing out on some awesome, awesome stuff. You got your whiskey glasses, your gym bags, your shoes to go to the gym. You know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And, of course, you got your tumblers. You got your standard T-shirt, hoodie, sweatpant combo. Ladies, we even got you as well. We got your swimwear, workout attire, and we even got your tech equipment. Cell phone cases, cell phone chargers, AirPod cases, whatever your heart desires, we got you. Um, so for Danny, who is in route to New York on vacation, have a safe trip, brother. For Mark and Alex, it's David Bronx Chacho signing off. <laughs>